Hey guys, it's Tia. Welcome to the video. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about Redbubble again and this is obviously a highly requested topic. I said I was going to do a Q&A video following on from my last one. Uh, go check it out if you haven't already. I'll link it up there. Which basically tells you my entire method for getting multiple daily sales in six minutes. Uh, I did say I was going to do a Q&A video on that about nine months ago now, I think, but that never ended up happening so I'm sorry but hopefully uh, now I can have more time to make content and make more videos in separate chunks so I can expand more on the individual questions that I got instead of just lumping them all into one video which was what I was planning to do um, because I did get quite a lot of them so one of the most common questions that I get is how do you make your very first sale? So before I start with the video, I just want to show my Redbubble sales recently. Um, as you can see, I made two sales today and then on the 9th, I have four accounts now. Two of them are in niches and then two of them are just random. So as you can see, two sales yesterday, a few on the 9th, 8th. Uh, these are manufacturing statements and then sales on 7th, 5th and Here's another account that I have. So I made some on the 9th in June, May. And then the most recent account that I have uh, made some last Friday, last Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. You get the idea. Uh, it still works. Redbubble isn't dead, okay? It still works, always will work probably. So just wanted to give some tips on how you can make your very first sale. Now, what's so special about your first sale, other than the fact that it's the first one and people get hyped up about it? Because you would think your first sale is going to be the same as the rest of your sales, right? But in this case, it's not necessarily true because of two main reasons, I think. So Redbubble, it doesn't rank new sellers as well as old sellers. So if you've been making sales in the past, you're going to rank higher than someone else using the same keywords. And secondly, obviously, when you start out, you don't have enough uploads. And as we all know, the more uploads you have, the higher the chance of getting found and thus making a sale. So in order to prove my point, uh, I have my most recent account dashboard. So I made this account in November 20th of last year. It's my most recent account. It's in a particular niche. And I just want you to take a look at the traffic sources that I'm getting. So uh, if I just move my face, okay. So in November, I got around less than 200 and in December, a little bit more, and it sort of goes up like a mountain. I mean, it's the middle of July now, but I'll get some more in July, hopefully. Um, but it's this general kind of shape, right? So let's scroll up to my earnings and my sales now. Okay, so what do we see here? We start earning in November. Um, I guess there was a little bit of lag, but we earned about 20 pounds in November and voila, what kind of shape is this? So your earnings, they roughly parallel your views. And from this, it should be clear that what you should be focusing on is views. Okay. And that's where a lot of people, especially beginners on Redbubble get it wrong because it's not really about making the best designs and out competing other people. I mean, you can make the sickest design in the world, but if nobody's searching for it, if nobody's viewing it, then how are people supposed to buy it? So that is like a basic principle of business e-commerce. Okay. So doing your market research is really important, especially in this case. Granted, I'd already done some research. I know what sells because I've had a previous account and I've been doing this for a while. But if you're new, then that is definitely something to be aware of. So trying to get the views up first before you get sales, because if you don't have views, then you're not going to get sales. And if you actually aren't getting those views, then it's probably time to change up your search engine optimization methods or just picking niches that actually sell. OK, I'm aware that this is my way of doing things. OK, there's a lot of people that have been successful just selling their own art um, it's good like it's their creativity like who am i to tell you what to sell you need to do research and all that blah blah like if you just love 
being creative and making your own art in your own style, um, then go for it. I mean, a lot of very successful sellers have made it just creating the art that they want. But I'm telling you that now, because it's so competitive, like print on demand has a very low threshold. You've got to think about that. Like anybody on the internet can upload. So that's why it's so competitive compared to other um, e-commerce websites, which, you know, you need to ship and stuff like that. But there's a lot of stuff on Redbubble. So if you want to get sales fast and get sales on a daily basis, um, you can't just do what people were doing before and still make a good profit of it, in my opinion. So that's just something to think about. Uh, I'm not trying to say that you can't sell what you want to sell, but it would be better if you did the research and maybe like do a mix of the two. So maybe you want to create like flower drawings and then something's trending, say like, uh, I don't know, some flower pop song with keywords, trade trademark check, obviously. Um, and then you could include that in your art maybe, and that would increase the chance of getting a sale on that piece of art. But yeah, that's just my take on it from my experience. Now, if you are getting views, then one of the important things that you can calculate for your shop is the conversion rate. So this is the number of sales divided by the number of visitors. So let's do it for my shop. 238 sales I got on this shop in total divided by, let's calculate here, uh, 3737. And that comes out to about 6%. Okay, so I have around... 6.4% conversion on this store, which isn't bad. 10% is considered good, 11% very good. And for e-commerce, it's around uh, 1% to 2%. That's like the average slash decent conversion rate. So this shop is doing pretty well. And if your conversion rate is very low, so say like less than 1%, that shows that you might want to improve your designs themselves because... If you do have a lot of visitors, uh, that means people are seeing your design. So you're doing things right in terms of search engine optimization and uh, researching your niches clearly, but people aren't buying them. So why are they not buying them? Probably because they're not very good designs um, to be perfectly honest. So if you are not getting the views in the first place, then that's where to start. Now, how do we do market research for print on demand? One thing we can do is look at Google Trends and see what people are searching for on Google because Redbubble images appear on Google. So if I just type in, so if I just type in beer shirt here, uh, we can see various websites that appear. So we've got Wish, Spreadshirt, T Public, Etsy. Um, let's try and find a Redbubble one. Yeah, so Redbubble appears here in Google Images. So starting with Google wouldn't be a bad idea. You can go to Google Trends and just have a look at what's trending. So the World Cup is trending, um, football, Kim Kardashian. Let's look up beer, shirts. Yeah, so you can kind of see a pattern of how it's trending. And this gives you a good overall idea of what to sell if you're selling in other places as well. But for Redbubble, there tends to be a certain demographic. So certain things tend to trend on there. And I would definitely recommend one particular way of doing research for Redbubble specifically. I'll be going to this website here. So bubbletrends.com, um, bubbletrends herokuapp.com slash trends, which I'll link down in the description. And this basically shows you all the trending keywords and topics, niches that are trending on Redbubble today. And what this is, so you might be wondering where they get this information from. Well, if we go to Redbubble, we've got the search bar here and this basically shows you what's trending. So if you type in letter, say A, we've got Australian Aboriginal art, uh, Australian stuff does sell very well on Redbubble because it is an Australian site after all. Uh, we've got Addicted to Reading, Adopted is my favorite breed. And then if we type in B, we've got all these trending topics, okay? And this website basically makes a list of the hottest trending topics on Redbubble. Um, so as you see, we've got 
Australian Aboriginal art and addicted to reading here. If you decide to make a list yourself, because as you can see, they're missing uh, some things. So if we type in AB, um, we've got some more options available here and they don't necessarily list all of these on bubble trends. It's really just the first letter they list here. So if you would like to make your own list, then feel free. You can search for it and then you can find the number of results here. So you can make a spreadsheet of the keyword or the topic, the niche, and then the number of results. And you can make your own for the day or the week. So what do we do with this list once we have it? Well, got to look at the results. So I would say anything under 200 is a good bet. Uh, you'll probably make sales there if you post good original designs that rank well and have the correct keywords. But anything over 200, maybe 300 is going to be hard to rank in. So let's just order the results for today. So we've got 44. That's definitely something I would go for. So whatever this is, um, 500, probably not. We'll keep that on the radar though. Um, 219 is okay. Uh, I would prefer less. We've got 175. So I would probably design something in that. So just go through the list like I just did and Pick out the ones with the results. Now, what you want to do once you've made a list of the ones with less than 200 results is you want to order them by the order of results. Okay, so I would order, what was this one? 44, actually, this one would be first. If we can see one that's less than 44. No, I don't think so. So that one would be first and then this one would be second. Uh, oh, 44 here, so first, first second and then just keep on doing that for the ones that you've picked out so make a list of them in order from smallest to biggest and then what you, you want to do once you have that list is to check them for trademark because you do not want to be uploading trademark stuff or copyrighted material um, that's infringing on intellectual property and could get your account deleted it's happened to a bunch of people before what you do is you go to this website, it's called trademarkia.com. Okay, and you put in your keyword here. Now granted, uh, one design might have several keywords. So if you're uh, searching for, I don't know, Mickey Mouse, and which is part of Disney, it might, I mean, I do think Mickey Mouse is trademarked. Let's see if it is. It's definitely trademarked. So you can't design Mickey Mouse related stuff, but if it wasn't trademarked, then Disney would be trademarked and Mickey Mouse would be part of Disney. Okay, so you do need to look at the keywords in a, a common sense kind of context. Okay, so you can't just say, oh, because one thing word for word, letter for letter isn't trademarked, it's not necessarily going to be okay to design for that, uh, which I know is frustrating and is where people get into problems with trademark here. But another thing you can do is go to a search on Amazon. So Amazon Merch, people upload stuff there as well. And if they've uploaded it there, it's probably gonna be okay because, as long as it's not trademarked, obviously, because Amazon is very strict with trademark um, compared to Redbubble and other sites. So that's one thing you can do. Yeah, just keep on uploading. Um, until you get that first sale, make sure you're uploading in these trending niches, these popular niches. And if you really do want to create your own art, you don't want to make anything in one of these niches, then maybe consider adding a keyword from here um, within the realm of trademark, obviously. Consider adding a keyword from this list into your design tags or your title, and that should increase your chances of getting a sale on that particular listing. Now, once you have your first sale, it becomes a lot easier to then rank up the rest of your products uh, because every time you get a sale, all of your products actually move up slightly in the ranks. So as you can see, I didn't have a lot of stuff in November, but then it started to increase um, and I didn't necessarily upload a lot more. 
Um, I have around 50 uploads on this account, I think. So it's not very much, but, and I uploaded them mostly in November, December, but the sales increased. That's because they were starting to rank higher and people were finding them more as well. You've just got to wait that initial time out. Okay. So it could be a few days. It could be a month. I don't know. Um, but as long as you keep on trying, keep on uploading, you should eventually get a sale in my opinion. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful and let me know if you have any questions. I do plan on making some more print on demand videos. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe and turn on the notifications bell if you want to see those. Uh, follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all linked in the description. And that's it for today. I will see you in the next video.